What is up everyone, Nick here, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to sand your raw 3D prints and get them perfectly smooth and ready for paint. This video is part two in a series where I show you guys how to make your very own motorized Iron Man Mark 42 helmet. But everything I talk about in these videos can be applied to a plethora of other projects. And just like I said, in this video, we're going to be exclusively covering how to sand and prep your 3D prints for paint. Now don't get it twisted. There are no right or wrong ways when it comes to sanding your 3D printed parts. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you my personal process when it comes to getting these things perfectly smooth. So let's talk about what you guys are going to need. Now, if you don't have this tool, this should be the very first thing on your list to go buy, and that would be an electric orbital sander. This is a wonderful investment. They're fairly cheap nowadays, like only 30 or 40 bucks, and it's gonna save you so much time and so much effort. If you're planning on building more than one helmet, hell, even if you're planning on building just one helmet, please go out and get yourself one. You're going to thank yourself later. And the very next thing you're gonna to wanna to buy is some sandpaper for your orbital sander. Personally, I really like 120 grit sandpaper. It's fairly coarse and it gets the job done and it gives me a fairly good amount of control as I sand. But a lot of people like using 80, 60, or 100 grit sandpaper. The choice is yours. Next up, you'll need some proper sheets of sandpaper and you're also gonna need a set of files. Basically, an electric sander is gonna do most of the job when sanding, but but there are still some nooks and crannies we're just not gonna be able to reach with it, and this is where these come in. But after the initial sanding with 120 grit sandpaper, you're gonna wanna use something like 220 grit sandpaper, and this is going to allow you to smooth out your 3D print, not only getting rid of imperfections, but also getting rid of some of the scratches caused by the 120 grit sandpaper. And once you've attained something that you are happy with that is fairly smooth, you're going to need a higher grit sandpaper. Personally, I like using 400 grit for this, but you can also use 600 or 800 grit sandpaper, whatever works for you. And for this last pass of sanding, I also recommend wet sanding it. Basically, you're going to be sanding your part under running water. I also highly recommend you get yourself some body filler and some spot putty. Now, a lot of people like to think that these are basically interchangeable and they're not exactly the same thing. Now, besides the fact that you need an activator to use body filler, you cannot use your spot putty the same way as you would your body filler. It says it in the name, this is spot putty. This is made for teeny tiny imperfections in whatever you're sanding. You cannot apply spot putty in thick layers or else it'll start to crack and it won't cure all the way. Meanwhile, body filler has an activator in it, so it's going to cure no matter what and you can make it as thick as you want. Honestly, the only use for body filler in this situation would be if you have really big imperfections in your 3D print, maybe a support failed and you have a giant gash in your print, that sort of thing. And last but not least, you're gonna want some filler primer. Filler primer, again, it says it in the name, it's going to fill teeny tiny imperfections in whatever you're building, and it's gonna help level out your layer lines. Essentially, we're playing a glorified balancing act with our layer lines. We are trying to fill in the valleys, and we're also trying to sand away the peaks. And by doing both of those things, eventually, it's all gonna completely level out, and we're gonna get a smooth surface. And with that said, I'm gonna stop rambling, and we're gonna go into the shop, and we're gonna start sanding this thing. I don't know where to begin with this. <laughs> So I might as well explain why I prefer sanding first instead of putting a layer of primer down. It's mostly due to waste. Because when you're sanding primer, it tends to clog the sandpaper a lot more than if you're just sanding raw plastic. Using filler primer first can be advantageous if you're planning on saving time. Basically, it'll fill up most of the layer lines. That way you only have to sand away the hills. You don't have to sand down to the valleys. But then again, you're going to be using quite a bit more primer and you're going to be using a lot more sandpaper than you would need to if you were starting with sandpaper. But I'm a total cheapskate and I absolutely hate layer lines. So we're going to start with our electric sander first. But let me give you a pro tip before you start sanding or adding filler primer to anything. If you have a part that has any sort of little details like these, you're going to want to get some files and sand these down before you start sanding or filler priming. Now here's why. Well, that's because as you start sanding your part down, you're going to start to lose details progressively as you start removing material. And on top of that, if you start using filler primer, you're going to start filling up these detail lines and they might actually vanish on you. Now you could score the detail lines back in after you've sanded and primed the part, but it's just going to be way more difficult. So we might as well score them now, that way we save time and effort later on. All right, so I just scored this one back into the faceplate. Now these two details on the front are actually not that bad. They're pretty deeply recessed into the faceplate itself. Now this detail right here on the side of the eye, 
Now this is important that we score because it's super, super shallow. If I start sanding the side of the faceplate right away, I'm probably gonna lose this detail. So we're gonna score this one back in. There we go, and nice. So just after a few minutes of work, this is already pretty deeply recessed back into the faceplate. So once we start sanding this, I'm pretty confident we're not gonna be losing this detail. So now we're ready to start sanding this thing. Hmm, should I use fresh sandpaper? Probably, yeah. Crusty. There we go. Okay, we got a fresh piece of sandpaper that's just gonna Velcro on like so. Let me just align it, there we go. Voila. Here are the two golden rules for sanding PLA Plus with an electric sander. The first one would be you don't wanna to apply too much pressure to the part while sanding it, and the second one is you don't wanna stay in a certain area for too long. Because if you do any of those two things, or both at the same time, the plastic will start to heat up and it'll warp and distort your part. It might not look like it at first, it might look perfectly fine, but once you start applying the primer and the paint, you'll start to see the infill of your part through all of that. So whenever you're sanding, just apply the weight of the sander onto your part and constantly make semicircles and move from place to place. And as you start sanding more and more with an electric sander, you'll start to develop a feel for it. One more tip I'd like to give you guys, every once in a while, take a break from sanding your part with an electric sander and wipe away some of the dust that's built up on it. So if we take a look at it, it kind of looks pretty good right now. It looks perfectly smooth. But if we start wiping away some of the dust that's built into the layer lines, we'll start to see they're actually still layer lines that we need to get rid of. So just take your electric sander, give it a second pass, maybe even third pass, and all these layer lines should technically be gone. Also keep in mind that when you're sanding your parts with your electric sander, you have a little bit less control than you would with regular sandpaper. So to avoid losing detail while sanding, try following the surfaces of your part. For example, the side of the faceplate is rather smooth. You're gonna keep your sander aligned with that side and slowly start to transition into the front of the faceplate. And as you do that, you keep your sander perfectly parallel with this edge right here. Now, as you can tell on this side, I was able to keep the cheek fairly sharp. So whenever you're encountering these sorts of edges here, you wanna make sure that your sander is flat on the surface and you go back and forth between both sides of the edge, making it sharper as you go. Kind of like when you sharpen a blade, you do both sides. This is the exact same premise. I'm starting with this side and then I'm doing this side and I'm going back and forth just to make sure that this edge stays sharp. So I pretty much sanded everything I physically can with the electric sander. There are of course quite a few spots that I can't actually reach with it, like this recess here, the inside of the eyes, stuff like that. So we're going to be using sandpaper and files to sand all of that. But before we get to that, we're actually going to sand the outside of the faceplate with the electric sander. And why is that? Because once we start painting this thing and adding primer, paint, clear coat and whatnot, all those layers are gonna build up. And if we put all the parts back together, they might not fit correctly when we try to motorize it. So to reduce the risk of that, we're actually gonna sand all these edges, make them nice and clean, and that way we shouldn't have any issues when we go to motorize this thing. We're almost done with this stage of sanding. All we have left to do is to clean up the eyes and some of the details. So we're going to be using sandpaper and we're also going to be using our files for this. So I think I'm gonna start with this portion right here, try and lining up my sandpaper with this corner. Just slowly but surely get rid of some of those layer lines as best as we can. So I just filed the entirety of this eye hole here. I didn't touch this one, I only did this one right here. So let's compare them. So you can see that this here is basically perfectly smooth. And on the other side, you can see all of these layer lines. So once we start uh, applying our primer, sanding with finer and finer grits, these eye holes are gonna be basically perfectly smooth. I'm finally, finally done sanding all the parts with 120 grit sandpaper with the electric sander and with actual sandpaper and files and whatnot. The next step we're going to be doing for this helmet is adding body filler to any imperfections on the helmet. So you can see right here, there's like a pretty big gash. And if we tilt it this way, you can see there's like a really weird dip right here. So we're gonna fill this up with some body filler and then we're gonna sand it smooth. Uh, the rest of the helmet looks pretty dang good, I'm not gonna lie, I, I, did a pretty, I, I did a pretty good job on this. And once we get the body filler here perfectly smooth, we're just gonna cake all the parts in primer and we're gonna move on to the next steps of sanding. And with that said, let me whip up some Bondo and we'll get right to it. Got our hardener right here, got a stick. And I also have a scrap piece of cardboard, that way I can mix it on the cardboard and just throw this away after. 
because we're not going to be mixing a whole lot of uh, Bondo here. Just a little bit to fix this here. Let's see if I can get it off with the stick without breaking the stick. There we go. Might have to mix up the Bondo. I'm not sure. There we go. Oh yeah, we're going to have to mix it up a little bit. Now I always overdo it with the hardener and I don't think that it's going to change today. Get it all nice and gloopy. Look at my sticky, sticky fingies. Ooh, somebody has a fetish for this, I bet. Let me just uh, get next to this big old box right here. So everything's been sanded with 120 grit. We're already covered that. Just primed everything. It's all dry now. So I'm going to be adding glazing and spot putty to some of the imperfections now. Try to fill those up. And then we're going to sand everything with 220 grit sandpaper. So not only is this going to get rid of some of this rough texture from the 120 grit sanding we just did, but it's also going to smooth out the spot putty we're about to put on. Here's a pro tip for you guys. If you want to add spot putty to an edge like this one right here, but you don't want it to get all cruddy and gross because, you know, you're trying to smudge in putty into this line, you can use a Q-tip to guide it along this. That way it'll conform to the actual shape of the line right here. And it'll be much, much easier to sand after this has dried. All right, so the dome's been completely sanded smooth. I used 220 grit sandpaper. Didn't bother wet sanding it since we have body filler and we have spot putty on this. Um, those two things are extremely hydroscopic, so I didn't want to put any water on this. But now that this is perfectly smooth, I'm gonna hit this with another heavy, heavy coat of filler primer. And then we're going to repeat the exact same process. We're gonna fix any imperfections we find once we have the filler primer on here. And we'll just repeat that process over and over again until we're ready for the next stage, which is basically 400 grit sandpaper wet sanding. And then after that, it will be ready for paint. And if you followed every single one of those instructions to the letter, you should have a perfectly smooth Iron Man helmet ready to paint. But before we paint this bad boy, in the next video, we're going to be doing all the electronics, wiring, coding that we need to motorize the faceplate. So if you want to watch part three as soon as I upload it, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.